Alright guys, and we are back for part 6 of my AE86 respray series, and in this video, we're going to be spraying the panels. These are all the panels that I was working on in the previous videos, and obviously, first step here is to put a coat of high build primer on them. Much the same as the body, what we're going to be doing here is getting a nice thick layer of this sandable primer, and then uh, coming back with some 400 grit sandpaper and just making sure everything's nice and flat before we actually finally commit to doing the clear over base. And, um... And yeah, as I said in previous videos, the gun settings haven't changed much. Running full fan, full fluid, and about that 20 PSI mark. Uh, spraying with my the Vilbis GTI Pro Light. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention about this gun in the past was the fact that it's a light gun. Uh, it's obviously in the name, it's a Pro Light. Um, I really noticed the difference of having a lightweight gun compared to my old thing that was super heavy. It just helps with fatigue. Your gun is obviously going to be heavy when the pot's full of paint but it does make a big difference, even a couple of hundred grams off of the weight. The fatigue in the wrist and the in your forearm and your hand is just so much less. You definitely notice a difference going from a heavier gun. So even that alone, even if the gun sprayed the same as the old one, uh, it's, just, it's just a nice thing to have a lighter gun. So yeah, like I'm just working through all the panels, obviously got the front guards, the boot, the headlight covers, getting everything sealed up with a nice coat of primer. There were a few other parts that I needed to respray, uh, such as the doors, the fuel filler cap. There was a bunch of miscellane miscellaneous parts that I did need to spray up. Uh, I didn't bother putting a coat of primer on everything just because the paint that was on the other parts was in really good condition and was nice and flat. So rather than just sanding that paint all the way back and just creating a bunch more work for myself, I decided that I would just rub it back because it's already prepped up really nicely, rub it back nice and smooth with the 400 grit like everything else and just paint over the other paint job, which is a two pack. So it's it's gonna stick due to the sanding scratches and there won't be any issues with uh, uh, any kind of chemical reactions because it is like a two pack paint. So like obviously the option, other option would be to just prime over the two pack paint that's already there, but then you're facing the issue of having heaps of different layers of paint. So. I opted to just sand the the doors and some other panels down that the paint was in really good condition on. And yeah, obviously just got to change the color slightly to suit the rest of the body. And I just, I just figured that was the best way forward for me at the time. And it's worked out fine. I haven't had any problems up until this date. So it's still running strong. And once we finished spraying all the panels with the high build primer, left it overnight. And then the next day went in and much the same as the body, just had to apply some guide coat and sand everything right down to get it as smooth as possible. Just like anything else, you know, there's obviously last minute repairs here and there that needed to be done. And looking back at this job, one of the things that I'd learned throughout this process was uh, getting the panel gaps perfect is not an easy task. So uh, in hindsight, something that I probably would have done differently would be to mount all the panels on the car while the car was still in primer and then get all the panel gaps perfect. So the panel gaps right now, they're not bad. They're probably just as good as they were coming off of the factory floor in Toyota. But um, factory Toyota panel gaps aren't always the best. So looking back at it, if I was to get all the panels on the car before the car was painted all in primer and got all those panel gaps lined up perfectly, it would have just brought the paint job up to the next level. It's one of those things that most people wouldn't even notice because the panel gaps are pretty good. Uh, it'd just be the, the top 5 or 10% of people who have an eye for that sort of thing would actually take note and say you know it's a it's a bit of a better job than on what it is now but um i suppose it's just one of those things that you learn um this being my first ever paint job i never really thought it was that big of a deal getting all the panel gaps together and it really kind of isn't um it's just one of those things where if you want to put the time into it it does get to a point of diminishing return depending on how much time you want to put into getting your panel gaps perfect but um Looking back at it, I probably would do it just for my own personal gratification. I do like the look of a car that's as perfect as possible. So uh, whenever I do go ahead and respray this car again, or whether it's another car that I do a respray on, I definitely want to get everything done in primer. And then when I do have everything sanded back, I want it to all happen on the car and get all those gaps lined up perfectly. So that's just a little note that I am definitely taking from this paint job. But um, even though I didn't do it, I'm still very happy with the end result. Another big learning experience that I had on this respray was the amount of time it takes to prep the body panels. So I actually thought that the body shell was gonna take the most amount of time in this respray as far as prep work goes and everything. That's why I did it first. And uh, when I had gotten that done and it was I was happy with the end result, 
I thought, oh sweet, home stretch, I'm going to be doing the panels now and that's it. And the panels took heaps longer. It's just a lot more work, it's a lot more fiddly. There was heaps more prep work to do. The, the boot had rust in it that I had to repair, so the panels definitely seemed like they were never ending. So it was a bit deceiving. I did think that I was at the halfway point or past the halfway point when I definitely wasn't. These panels took a lot longer than I expected. But um, like I said, that's just back to the whole learning experience and now I know. For the next time, just because I got the body done doesn't mean I'm anywhere near finished. So all these panels did take quite a lot of work to get to this point. And when I think about it, I don't even have all the panels in the spray booth here. I couldn't fit them all in. Like this was the spray booth at full capacity and I still had to do the bonnet, which wasn't in the booth here. So I ended up doing the bonnet in the next episode. And the bumpers, I didn't even do videos of me spraying the bumpers. And that's just a long story due to the paint not working. I ended up buying a matte black for my front and rear bumpers. And the guys that sold me the paint at the my local automotive paint supplier, they recommended that particular paint and it was all well and good. But the hardener that they sold me with the matte black that they sold me was uh, reacting to the paint and it just wouldn't dry it stayed sticky for two three hours later it eventually would dry but it never ended up drying in a nice matte finish it stayed like a shiny satin finish which i wasn't happy with yeah that just ended up being a bit of a debacle and having to you know mess around with that what i ended up doing was i like to use dna paints they're my favorite for doing any kind of a flat finish where it's like a matte finish whether it's matte clear or a matte black i do prefer dna paints and whenever i do paint matte black i always go for a solid color i don't do a, like a clear over base i always do solid flat black is my favorite way to paint and i always use dna solid flat black the dna paints they actually use a resin where the other paint suppliers they will use a powder so it's like a it's a matting agent that they call talc and it's basically like a talcum powder like you would use on a baby's nappy that's what gets you that flatting agent and when you use a matting agent that's like a powder uh, you can never really mix it through it always comes out blotchy and you need to strain it and it's hard to get a consistent mix so like if you did need to do a repair in the future to get it to match is quite difficult uh, it's not impossible obviously a skilled painter can do it but DNA paint is always very consistent. So uh, they use a uh, matting resin instead of a powder. Um, don't ask me how they do it or what's in it, but that's the stuff that I like to use. I've always had great results with it. So it was at a later date, once I got the car back home, I came back and I just did the bumpers on their own. I didn't film any of that or anything, but um, they ended up turning out really nice. The rear bumper in the next video actually goes on the car and that was just sprayed in a acrylic flat black that I was never really happy with and I ended up just redoing it all in two pack with the DNA two pack paints so like I said I didn't actually film any of it but it definitely got done yeah so um working through these panels here like just doing the base coat like I say in the previous videos your best bet is to just do nice light coats on your base coat all the way until you get full coverage and then uh, just do one more coat just to just for good measure that's obviously what i did here i didn't film every single coat it would have been pretty monotonous to watch and uh i didn't have that much battery capacity at the time this is at this point i was starting to learn i really needed to stop and start my gopro to get me through the entire respray and on this particular day i remember really conserving the gopro's battery and getting all the way through to the end of the spray job it may have cut out toward the end but uh, i did get plenty of good footage of me spraying even the clear coat and at the end when i finally did the last talking piece i ended up just doing it on the iphone so while we're on the subject of how many coats i did on this spray job i believe i did four coats of base coat here and then i ended up doing two coats of clear coat and really being happy with the end result i do talk about it at the end of the video here in real time but i remember after the second coat i was very pleased with how everything looked and i remembered when i was painting the body shell i was really happy after the second coat and i made the decision to do a third coat just to get a li little bit more film build on there and that's when i actually got the runs and the mistakes started happening so in hindsight it could have been that i didn't leave the body shell long enough to dry between coats uh the flash times are pretty specific and I'm not sure I really followed a specific flash time so that could have been the issue there but with that fresh in my mind and while I was doing these panels I got the second coat on and I was really happy with how it looked so I ended up stopping at two coats so this is something that I wanted to mention because I don't want to hide anything from you guys and it was definitely a learning experience for me where 
when I put the car back together, and in particular where the door meets up to the rear quarter, if you look real closely, you can see a little bit of a difference in the shade of the white that's on the rear quarter panel and compared to the door. Because the door only has two coats of clear, then the rear quarter has like three. Uh, something that a lot of people don't talk about is when you buy a clear coat, it does have a tinter in it. So when you pour out a clear, it's not going to be clear like a like tap water. It's going to be it's going to have like a bit of a yellow tint to it, almost as if you mix a little bit of apple juice through it or something. And all that is is just to help with UV resistance. And because I put more coats on the body shell, the the clear coat tinted the white a little bit more. So it's got a very very it's very very faint, but like. It's got a slight tint to it, like it's a little more yellow to the like the body shell compared to the door. It's definitely a point that I've taken away from this respray and something that I probably won't do again. I want to make sure that in the future, like I said in previous videos, I'll probably put the whole car back together while it's all in primer just to get all the panel gaps perfect. And then when I do paint the car, there's a good chance that I will either paint the panels on the car or if I don't do that, if I use this spray booth again, I don't have space or whatever the excuse might be. I want to make sure that whatever procedure I follow on the body shell, I want to follow the same procedure on the panels that I spray. So if it's as simple as putting an extra coat of clear on there, you would normally think that it would make a difference, but you can only just tell. Um, it's obviously something that I'm looking for being my own car. I'm going to know all the little imperfections, but for someone to actually walk up and tell the difference, it's very difficult to see. The light has to be just right and everything. But if you ever do see my car in real life, if it's a car show or at the track or something, have a look. Have a look at the rear quarter and where the door meets up to the quarter and see if you can see a difference. Most people can't. I have mentioned it to a lot of people and they couldn't see the difference. So it's very faint, but it's definitely something where if you're striving for perfection, that's something that you want to pay attention to. So that's a little lesson that I learned there for myself and I won't be doing that again. So something that I wanted to say here about the situation that I have here with my spray booth, I'm obviously set up pretty well here uh, compared to most DIY spray painters, but at the same time, it's not perfect. Like my spray booth isn't perfect. The lighting isn't perfect. There's a lot of things that I can complain about. Um, and I just wanted to say that if anyone out there wants to have a go at doing something like this or whether it's not, you know, it doesn't have to be painting, it could just be working on your car in general. I always say that, uh, you know, the perfect time is probably never gonna come. If you wanna have a go at doing something, now is the best time to do it, and the next best time to do it would be yesterday. So I always look at things like this where, you know, I'm never gonna have the perfect setup, so right now I'm young and healthy and I can do this sort of stuff, so now is the best time to do it. And another point is that I always give my dad a hard time for collecting a lot of junk around the farm, but it really works in my favor at, you know, times like this where I can just go and get a couple of old barrels and use them as benches, or for example, the steel frame that I've mounted my fenders on, I don't know what that was ever used for, but I sort of was walking around the farm, I found that, hung a fender on it and said, well, that's gonna work pretty well. And when I did that, the fender kinda hung at too much of an angle. So I just came up with the idea of getting an old mixing cup and just cutting a notch in it so that it would sit at the bottom half of the fender so it just holds the fender up off of the steel frame. And it worked great for what I wanted. It sort of sits the fender in the same sort of position as what it would be if it was like sitting on the car mounted. So all I'm trying to say is if you do want to have a go, now's the best time to do it. Don't wait for the perfect time because the perfect time is never going to come. Um, I do see a lot of spray painters that have really nice A-frames and mounts for doors and all sorts of things to spray in and, you know, beautiful downdraft booths and stuff. And that's obviously the dream, but unless you become a billionaire, it's not going to happen. So if you want to have a go, if you want to paint your car, rebuild an engine or just do anything in general, even if it's just a small service, you can do it. Just have a go. The worst thing that could happen is you mess up and then you have to do it again. So I highly recommend having a go at doing something like this because it's extremely rewarding. And um, right now, this is pretty much what I live for. I love spray painting, I love doing engine builds, and now my new thing is YouTube. So as I finish my second coat of base coat there, I end up stopping the camera and finishing the last two coats. I ended up doing about four coats of base coat on these panels. And just before I pull out the clear gun, I have a bit of a walk around here and I just check that everything's got coverage, make sure I'm happy with the finish. There's no funny chemical reactions or anything happening to the paint and I'm letting it really flash off. And then obviously I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some clear and do a couple of coats of clear coats. So what I think I might do from here is 
let you guys just watch the raw footage of me spraying some clear coat. It goes on like glass. It's absolutely beautiful in this video. And the angles of where all the panels are and everything, you can really see the clear coat go on the panels. So I'd like to leave the raw footage here for you guys to enjoy. It was really satisfying for me to watch back. And I think in the next few clips here, you can definitely see how much my painting skills have progressed compared to the first few parts where I was just spraying primer. I can definitely maintain a much more consistent distance from the panel. And pretty funny if you notice toward the end of me spraying the second coat of clear here, I actually run out of paint right on time. So I was painting that last driver side fender and as I was just about to finish it, I ran out of paint and it just worked out perfectly. So I mixed the exact amount of paint here and that was just a total fluke. If you're not too interested in watching the raw footage, I do turn on my iPhone and talk to you guys in real time and have a bit of a walk around the panels when they're finished. And if you want to see that, that's at minute 2438. So um, I hope you enjoy guys.
Okay, so I just got done spraying the clear over base on the panels and I'm really, really happy with it this time. Um, I did the same thing on the body and I just, I did two coats and it was perfect just like this. And then I did the third coat and I started getting runs and messing up. So I did two coats here, stoked with the finish, no runs, good coverage. I'll give you guys a good look at it. Couldn't be happier. This is the sort of thing I wouldn't even bother polishing. Barely got any dust in it. Very happy with it. I think two coats is enough. I don't want to get too much film built on it anyways. And I think once I polish the body, I can make it look just like this. But getting a good finish off the gun just saves so much work. Look how nice that is. Like it's not as flat as glass, like you could still polish a bit of orange peel out. But it's good enough for me, I'm happy with that. It actually seemed like the panels were a lot more work than the body. I also did the hinges. Just behind me now. I only put one coat of clear on the hinges. I've got good coverage with the base coat. I probably did about four coats of base coat. And I just sprayed it with one coat of clear. But the thing is with the hinges, as soon as you put nuts or bolts through them, the clear just compresses and comes off anyway. So I was going to try just do one coat this time and see if I have any problems with it. I've got coverage on it, it's still got a nice finish. But I thought just for the hinges, one coat. I couldn't be happier. So that'd be it for this video guys. And if you've made it this far, you can't miss part seven because it's going to be the final part of this series where I paint all the last little bits and pieces and I start reassembling the car. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.